Hi, hello, and welcome. In this video, we will finally get our hands dirty and we will create our first artifact. This video is just first video in a series of videos where we will be working with artifact because there is a lot of to cover. Just a little heads up, uh, we will be working with automated meta reader template that you can also use in your environment, but it's, it is really not necessary. It's, it's preferable, but not necessary because all of our explanation will be just general and almost exclusively template agnostic. So there is no need to follow us in the same template or in the same module. All right, so let's jump right in. You have many different options how you can create artifacts. One of those options is that you can create artifact right here in the folder structure. To create your first artifact, you need to be sure that you will click here on all, and then you can select folder where you would like to create your artifact. In real life, you probably have strictly defined folder structure, and for example, all artifacts that are uh, specific to hazard and risk should be created uh, in this folder, etc., etc. But for our training purposes, let's choose this high-level tra training project folder. For me, it is the most uh, easiest uh, because I, I can find uh, this artifact later very easily. All right, so choose any folder and then hit create. And you see you have many different artifact types that you can choose from or you can choose this other. Let's choose this other. By choosing other, you can now select any artifact type that is pre-created here in this template or in your project. Let's say that our first artifact will have artifact type, for example, information. So it will be textual artifact and the content of the artifact can be created here. So the content of my artifact will be a coffee shall be the human right. And you see, as soon as I type this in, the name was created automatically. So by default, uh, when you create content, the first 250 characters are also created here in a name. You can have different name and content, but that's not the default behavior. Default behavior is that the initial content uh, will be the same as your name. Or uh, again, at least the first 250 characters. Now, one important tip. When you are selecting artifact type, I can select different artifact type, for example, stakeholder specification. You see, artifact format was changed automatically to module. If I will jump and select heading, it artifact format was again choose automatically to text based on how we associated this artifact type with artifact format in settings. So this is automatic behavior and it's working great. Please, even though the application let you change it, for example, I will select information and the application let me choose module, please don't do that. Let it on automatic, it's working great. You don't need to fear anything. If you will cha change this artifact format to module or something different, you will create inconsistencies and errors and problems down the line. So it happened in our customer's environment a lot. Please don't do that. Let it on automatic. If you will select information, let it be the artifact format text as uh, it is created and assigned in settings. And now the last thing, folder. We selected this folder specifically. So you see folder by default is training project because I selected it before I created this artifact or start creating this artifact. But you still can choose any different folder right now. But uh, I don't want that. I selected training project folder specifically. All right, and now, by clicking OK, we created our first artifact. This is called base artifact because this artifact is created outside the module. So artifacts in this folder structure are called base artifacts. Artifacts that are used and created in modules 
are called module artifacts. We will be covering mod module versus base artifact in a separate videos, but for now it's enough for you to know that there is something called base artifact and there is something that we call module artifact. Excellent, so the first part of this video is done. Let's now focus on creating artifact inside the module. To create artifact in the module, let's first go to any module. Again, this is just general explanation. You can use any module you want. If you are using the same template, just click here on modules. And if you don't see anything, just click on this base folder and click here on show all modules. Again, you can choose any module you want because this is not content specific. For example, I will use stakeholders requirements specification. Now, I don't need to see any hierarchy or I don't need to use any hierarchy. I can go and let's create any artifact. So by clicking on create, you see we have again some artifact types here or you can choose create other artifact types. Again, this is just option. If you don't uh, want to use any of those artifact types here, you can choose uh, other artifact types. And now uh, you are able to create any other artifact type. And you probably are now familiar with this window because this is the exactly same window as we used previously. So you probably know that uh, I would like to write some initial content. So I will use this content. This video shall ensure that the user experiences a positive and satisfactory day. You see that the name was creating uh, created automatically. And now you can choose artifact type. For example, again, it can be information or stakeholder requirement. Let's use stakeholder requirement. And you see artifact format text was again choose automatically. And let's, uh, let's not change folder. Let's not change template. Everything else should be default. And just click on OK. And you see this artifact here was created at the end of this module. OK, so we created artifact in the folder structure. We created artifact here in the module. But maybe the question is, what if I would like to use the artifact I created in the folder structure here in the module? Is it possible? And of course it is possible. And to do that, you can click here on create and use add an existing artifact. So the, the artifact we created in the folder structure, it exists already. So by choosing add an existing artifact, now we can look for this artifact and we use this training project folder because uh, we would like to ensure that it's easy to find. And it sure is because we have just one artifact here and it is our uh, coffee shall be the human right requirement. So by clicking on this artifact and by clicking on add, we added this artifact here again at the end of this module. There is just one more thing I would like to cover in this video. And although it is a little deeper topic, I think this is the right video and the right time. So the topic is, as we are creating artifacts here, you see some artifact types are already, let's say, bookmarked. So we see, see them right away, while others are hidden under other. And the same is, if we are in the folder structure, you see, we see some artifact types here, while other are again hidden under other field. So what are the settings? How those artifact types are displayed here and how uh, or uh, why other artifacts are uh, under the other and you need to select them here. The answer to, the, uh, to this question is here in manage component properties. So let's jump to artifact types. And here we can answer both questions. So the question why some artifact types are preferred when creating artifact in the folder structure and the question why some artifact types are preferred when creating artifact in the module. So to answer the first question, we can jump again to the folder structure and see we have actor, diagram, diagrams and sketches, hardware requirements, hardware specification, etc., etc. You see, the order is pretty similar to this one. 
because there is nothing else. This is just alphabetical order. That's because you have this section here, make this artifact type a preferred artifact type. Right now, none of those artifact types are selected to be preferred artifact types. If I would like for information to be preferred artifact type, I can select it here and hit save. I can, for example, choose also stakeholder requirement to be preferred. And I can also, for example, system requirement mark to be preferred. Excellent. So if I will jump back to the folder structure and just hit refresh, and if I will now click on create, you see, because I selected some artifact types to be preferred, I have them here. So they are just, let's say, bookmark because those are my favorites. So they are bookmark and they are preferred when I am creating artifacts, uh, the new artifacts. And if you would like to have any other artifact type, just click on other and you can select those artifact types here. Excellent. Now to the second question. If we will go into the module, for example, again, to stakeholder requirement specification, you see that first answer is good for first question, but not to the second because nothing changed here. So how those artifact types are preselected here? Again, it is here in settings and manage component properties and artifact type section where we can find the answer. This answer is inside artifact types that are format module. So system requirement, you see, it's not a module, it's artifact format text, but stakeholder specification, you see, this is module. And we are in stakeholder specification when we are in stakeholder requirement specification module. And you see, this is pretty similar to what we see here. So we see heading, information, stakeholder requirement, and diagrams and sketches. You see again, heading, information, stakeholder requirement, diagram and sketches. So if I, for example, don't want to diagrams and sketches be here, I will select it and choose here, remove artifact type. If I would like, for example, to insert mm, hazard and risk, why not? I have them here and I can also change the order. So let's make it like this, click save. I can navigate back to the module. I will hit refresh so I can uh, clear cache and you see heading hazard and risk information stakeholder requirement. Excellent, right? So we have already answer to the second question. It's nothing hard, even though uh, this is a little deeper topic, I think it's important to know how you can change default behaviors when you are creating artifacts, because this is probably something that you will be using a lot. All right, so that's it for our first video, and I already look forward to our second video where we will continue working with artifacts. I really hope it was informative for you, and I look forward to see you in our next video.